Afternoon, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, as you can probably tell, we're not in Bandera, Texas anymore. We're actually in Grand Prairie, staying uh, with a friend who he and his wife are going to be part of the school. And so we're staying in a townhouse in town. So there's probably going to be more background noise and, and things than you usually get on our video. But that's all good. Um, so I wanted to, I'm going to do a video today on cigars and money. Uh, before I do, I'm going to go ahead and say, listen, if you watch the video and you like the content, go ahead and click like. Subscribe if you haven't. Click that bell uh, so you get notified. And uh, maybe hit uh, share and send it on to somebody else who's getting into uh, and you think might be interested in what we're doing. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give an update on where we are with the school. Okay? So you might want to stay around for that. So anyhow, cigars and money. Now I've got an Oliva V out here, which is a very, very nice cigar. And uh, so there's a couple of things when you get into cigars and you start smoking cigars and you start buying cigars. There's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. And get this going so I can enjoy it while we while we chat now a lot of people when they start something new they kind of have the mindset is this the right way is this the wrong way is this a good cigar is this a bad cigar uh, you need to not let yourself start thinking like that it's not a question of a good cigar or a bad cigar uh, taste is relative and so it's like saying I don't like oatmeal so oatmeal is bad and oatmeal is bad across the board it tastes bad no it just is not to your taste um, so taste is subjective and money is subjective and so what is inexpensive for somebody else may not be inexpensive for you but listen don't lose sight of the fact that if you are into cigars you're into cigars for you okay for you and so again it's what works for you and so one of the things that I want to encourage you in is the fact that an expensive cigar is not necessarily the best cigar now I have gotten over time there's been things have come up that I wanted to celebrate so I've gone down to the cigar shop and said I want to get a really good cigar for this and uh, but I want to try something new so I have got expensive to me keep that in mind expensive cigars like a, a Gurkha a large Gurkha uh, in a glass tube and I don't remember which, which one it was, but I paid like $20 for that cigar. Didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, the other day, I stopped in a shop and got a Cohiba Nicaragua. Um, a, a, I think it was a 6x60. Six uh, it wasn't a cheap cigar, and it was just a complete disappointment. But I have, I buy by the box, the Charter Oak, um, Connecticut Shade Cigars, 6x60s, and when I buy them by the box from where I order them online, they cost me about $5 a piece. And they're a really tasty cigar that really matches my deal. And so, you, there's not, there are some etiquette rules, all right? If you go in a cigar shop, there are some etiquette rules, but outside of some basic courtesy dealing with other people, if you have a cigar that you really, really like and it costs four or five dollars, don't get in the mindset that this cigar is a a inferior cigar to that cigar because that cigar costs sixteen dollars. It's not about the money. It's about the relaxation, it's about the brotherhood of cigars, and it's about taste. And so if you find a good cigar, now I'm talking hand-rolled cigars. I'm not talking Swisher Sweets or White Owls or something here. But part of the adventure is trying cigars and 
Well, that one's really putting off nice. Trying cigars and the adventure of exploring. And if you find a cigar, a flavor that you really like with a price point that you're comfortable with, man, go for it. Um, go for it and enjoy it because it's not about the money. Now, this is an Oliva V, which is a uh, very, very pleasant cigar, very nice cigar. The Oliva series across the board is good. Um, and so I just wanted to get that. You can, like I talked about before, you can order cigars by the box online uh and and save money and there are some really inexpensive cigars um the quorum we'll let this traffic go by here so the the quorum is a really inexpensive cigar i buy them in packs of 20s and they're like two bucks a piece some people like the in comparison they like the um oh factory smokes uh is another brand you know for when i'm out working and i just want something inexpensive in my pocket about halfway through i want something that's not a um not a deal there, there's all kinds of options so explore and don't let people tell you what is acceptable and what is not what is good and what is not and don't get caught up in the idea that you have to spend 12 15 17 dollars on a stick for it to be a good stick it's not so what makes it a good stick? If you enjoy it. If you enjoy it, it's a good stick. And just enjoy it. Okay? Uh, so, I've been asked what are some of my favorites. As you know, if you've been watching the Partagas Black Label 6x60, the Gigante, that is my number one favorite cigar uh, for common smoking. Uh, I really like the Oliva V's. I really like the Oliva V uh, Liga Especial. Uh, I like the Charter Oaks. I like the Connecticut Shade, the Habano, and the uh, Maduro. Uh, I like those a lot. I like the La Flor Dominica. Uh, they have some really good brands. They have one that you don't find very much. It's not real common called the Airbender. That one just really checked my boxes for me. I really like that. Um, and, uh, so those are, those are some to check out. I like the Christoph Vengeance. Um, I kind of like the Cohiba Blacks. Uh, I like the darker, stronger ones. Um, and if you're looking for inexpensive, try Brick House. Um, Brick House, uh, makes some pretty decent cigars. Um, but anyhow, I just wanted to encourage you. If, if you're just starting out, you, you don't have to break the bank. Uh, you just have to enjoy it, okay? So update on what we're doing. We're here in Texas for an undetermined amount of time. The land it has to, the closing on the property has to take place. And the contract, I think I heard ends on like the last of this month. And so we don't want to pack everything up and move to Tennessee before all the paperwork's done. Everything's complete. And so we're here and until things get ready to move over there and in the meantime we are in the process of of putting together a website with all the information that you guys are asking for about the school the classes that are going to be held the logistics and the details we are right now putting all that together um the school is we're hoping to be to hold the first class somewhere around the first week in june but we'll keep you updated and let you know and uh, so in the meantime, uh, just keep watching, stay up, relax, slow down, stop being sheeple, and uh, enjoy your life. And we'll catch you guys next time.